Hello, I'm Rishi Verma, and I'm engineer on the Swift Data team. I'm excited to share with you today all that is new in Swift Data. iOS 17 introduced Swift Data, a framework that allows you to model and persist your app's data in Swift across all of Apple's platforms. It lets you write code that is fast, efficient, and safe by harnessing modern Swift language features, like macros. In this video, we'll start with a quick reintroduction to the Swift Data framework and dive into what's new, starting with how to avoid duplicate models with a new schema macro. Then we'll cover new ways you can set up and configure model containers. And lastly, a deep dive into how to optimize queries with complex filters and harness a new macro to improve performance. First, let's take a quick tour of Swift Data. Swift Data is a framework that makes it easy to build your app's model layer and persist it across launches of your app. The framework not only provides persistence, but modeling and migration of your schema, graph management, synchronization with CloudKit, and so much more. To show you how easy it is to adopt Swift Data in your app, let me show you an app that me and the team have been working on, Trips. Trips is an app written in Swift UI and keeps track of all the different vacation ideas I'm thinking about. To use Swift data with the models in this app, I just need to import the framework and decorate each model with the model macro. This is the powerhouse of Swift data. And in the app's definition, the model container modifier on the window group tells the entire view hierarchy about the model trip. With this in place, my views can remove the static data and instead populate the view using query. This will fetch trip models from the model container and will return an array of trips. And that's it. An app now persists all of the trips that I create and fits perfectly into my Swift UI views. The first step was adding the model macro, and that was just the beginning of how to customize the schema. The model macro is powerful and jumpstarts the persistence experience. By simply decorating all of my persistible classes with the macro, the trip class and related models will have their stored properties persisted. And you can go even further to customize the schema with the macros for attributes and relationships, and the ability to mark a stored property as transient to avoid persisting that data. And this year, there's a new schema macro that allows you to construct a compound constraint on persistent models. You can use the new unique macro to tell Swift data which combinations of your model's properties must always remain unique in the model data. When two model instances share the same unique values, Swift data will perform an upsert on collision with an existing model. For example, in the trips app, I can use the unique macro to ensure trips are unique across their name, start date, and end date. This lets my app have multiple trips with the same name, but only if they have different start or end dates. This makes it really easy to avoid duplicates in the data. Since Swift Data has more information to reason about which models actually represent duplicates and performs updates to the data instead. And because these unique properties help ensure these models are not duplicated, they also represent the identity of this model. You can also use the attribute macro to decorate these properties with preserve value on deletion. This will ensure these identity values will be available when using the history API in Swift Data. Swift Data history provides a way for your app to know what models have been inserted, updated, or deleted over time. When models are deleted, values marked to be preserved are kept in the history information as tombstone values, giving your app the information it may need to process those changes. It also works seamlessly with custom data stores built to support it. To learn more, watch the video, track model changes with Swift data history. Tailoring the model container allows an app to fine tune its data location and how it is used throughout the app. The model container modifier is the easiest way to get started with Swift data. Just by providing the model types to persist, Swift data sets up a container for you. The model container modifier also lets you customize some of the properties of the container. For example, it can keep data in memory rather than on disk. It can enable or disable autosave, and it can have undo redo support turned on or off. To customize the model container even more, 
like changing where it is saved on disk, you can build your own model container instance separately. Let me do this for the trips app. Instead of using the model container modifier to construct a container, I'll create one of my own by using a property called container. In the properties closure, I will create a configuration for my model and pass the schema. This is where I'll customize the URL of the data on disk as well. Then I will pass this configuration to the model container initializer and return it. In iOS 18, Swift Data lets you customize your model container even further with fully custom data stores. The default data store provides a robust persistence backend supporting all of Swift Data's features. But now, you can create your own data store, which uses its own implementation to persist data across the container. For example, in the Trips app, I've implemented my own custom document format made of JSON files. To use it in the app, I just need to swap out the model configuration with one provided by the custom data store. In this example, the JSON store configuration. Custom data stores let you use familiar Swift data APIs, like the model and query macros, no matter what format the data needs to be persisted with. It also provides a way for data stores to adopt features incrementally so you can get started quickly. To learn more, watch the video, Create a Custom Data Store with Swift Data. You can also create custom containers for use with Xcode previews. Previews are the perfect companion when developing your app with Swift UI and work great with Swift Data. I want to create great previews for every view in the Trips app. I will start by using preview traits. To do this, I will create a new struct called sample data that conforms to preview modifier, which has two functions I need to fill out. One, for setting up a shared context for the preview, and another to apply the shared context to a view. For my trips previews, I will vend a model container as the shared context for the sample data. Since a preview doesn't need to store anything to disk, I will create a model configuration that stores data in memory only and set up the model container. I will then call a method I created earlier, which creates an assortment of sample trips and saves them into the model container. Since trips are now unique by name and dates, this code doesn't need to deduplicate any data. Swift Data does it for me. Finally, I will return the container. Next, I will need to implement a method which adds this model container to whichever view this sample data is used for. To do that, I will just apply the container using the model container modifier. Finally, I will add an extension to preview trait so that I can easily access this sample data. This creates a new static property called sample data, which will apply this sample data structure as a modifier. And now, when I declare a preview for any of my Swift UI views, I can use dot sample data with the traits parameter. This will create an in memory model container, load the sample data, and modify my previews to use it in its Swift UI views. Having great sample data available makes it easy to work on any of my app's views using Swift data queries. But some of the app's views might not include queries because they rely on models being passed to them. Now, you can use the previewable macro to make great previews for these two. For example, in trips, the bucket list item view takes a single trip as a parameter. With my sample data, the bucket list item view now has a model container with some sample data, but it hasn't been queried for that data yet. Now, you can use the previewable macro to create a query right in the preview declaration. This provides an array of trips that can be passed to the bucket list item view to create a preview with the sample data. Finally, let's talk about creating rich and optimized queries for Swift data. Query drives your Swift UI views with an array of models that can be sorted and filtered with ease, and it automatically reacts to changes made to the model container. Predicate facilitates filtering and can be evaluated during the data queries rather than with large in-memory data sets. Let's look at a few ways I can filter for trips. If I add a search bar to the trips app, the search text can be used to build a predicate for filtering my queries or even a fetch. Building a predicate is easy. I take the user-provided search text and see if the trip's name contains that text. 
but that text might apply to more than just a trip's name. So I will build a compound predicate to also check the destination property on a trip. That was all it took to build a compound predicate, but I can also make my predicates do so much more. New in iOS 18 is the ability to use Foundation's new expression macro to build complex predicates easily. Expressions allow for reference values that do not produce true or false, but instead allow for arbitrary types. Expressions can be used to represent complex evaluations using a model's properties, and composed within predicates to tailor the results of queries even further. In the Trips app, I want to create a query that fetches any ongoing trip where there are still some sites left to see. These are modeled by bucket list items on the trip whose is in plan property is still false. I will start by building a predicate. In the predicate, I will specify that the trip should be ongoing, so the current date falls within the start and end. But I also need to specify at least one of the bucket list items on the trip has the is in plan property set to false. Predicate alone doesn't let me express this, because there's no property that counts how many unplanned bucket list items there are. To do this, I can construct an expression that builds this logic into the predicate. This expression will count the number of bucket list items that I haven't yet planned. It takes an array of bucket list items and returns the number of items that meet the filter criteria. Now, I can evaluate this expression as part of my predicate with the provided trip's bucket list items. Then, my predicate can check whether the result of the expression is greater than zero. Expressions make the predicate macro an even more powerful and expressive tool to write queries that efficiently fetch the data needed for your app. But there's one more way that I can make these queries performant, and that is with an all new schema macro, index. The new index macro adds the ability to create a single or compound index on your model. Like a table of contents in a book, an index represents additional metadata, which Swift data generates and saves in the container. This metadata makes queries for specified key paths faster and more efficient. To get these benefits, you'll declare which properties that Swift data should create an index for. Consider those properties that most frequently occur in sorting and filtering of queries. In the Trips app, trips are frequently queried with filters and sorts that utilize the name, start, and end date properties. To make these queries even faster, I can add the index macro and specify key paths for the name, start, and end dates, and a compound index of the three. For a large data set, like my extensive vacation ideas, this makes filtering and sorting substantially faster. Queries are easy to use in SwiftUI with the predicate macro and become more powerful with expressions. Now with the index macro, you can make them even more performant in your app. Use the power of Swift data to build your app's model layer. Consider adding unique constraints to your schema to make it easier to avoid duplicate models. And speed up your queries by adding the new index macro. Use the new history API to track changes to your app's models. And with custom data stores, you can now harness the power of Swift data with your own document format or persistence backend. Thank you. It's been an honor, and we look forward to the amazing things you will make.